But uh, what I will do is thank you uh, very much for, for inviting me and for having me here. It, what, a, what a great organization, what a great way to honor somebody who gave so much to, to these causes. And I, I'm happy to be here to help recognize and honor the work that you're doing. And also because I think I got some story ideas here tonight, <laughs> listening to the, to the work of some of these groups. So I'm very happy. And um, Peggy asked me to, to say a few words on social justice from the perspective of a journalist. And I thought about that. Of course, we cover a lot of a lot of different things. Like I'm I'm covering a, a kind of jack of all trades now. I'll, I'll do the courts. I'll do, you know, I was in Detroit for a couple of weeks covering strikes out there and all kinds of different things. Uh, I didn't get to the Capitol yesterday for the big news there. Uh, I drew the short straw. Somehow I am the network's Hunter Biden correspondent. <laughs> so I was in Wilmington. I'm not quite sure why that happened. I was in Wilmington watching a man go into court and plead not guilty and walk out and make big news out of it. But um, be that as it may, I have covered a, a lot of issues. And when I thought about it, there was one moment that occurred to me. Um, it's, a, it's a famous story, but I have a, a, a small moment in it that, I, that has affected me. To this day, and, it, and it's the story of Obergefell versus Hodges, which is the Supreme Court case that that uh, legalized gay marriage, that struck down the laws prohibiting gay marriage across the country. I had my own journey on that issue. Uh, I, I remember talking to my oldest daughter. I have, I have four children. She's 27 now, and then I have the 11, 9, and 7 kids. The oops, I did it again and again and again. <laughs> yeah. But the my 27 year old, when that case was coming around. She was very much in favor of the recognition of, of these uh, unions as, uh, under law as marriage, and I wasn't. And I tried to, as her dad, at the dinner table one night, I tried to explain my position, and she, because she was in maybe middle school, maybe high school, you could do the math. And she said, Dad, you already have an argument. <laughs> and he went on to say, that what you're just saying is, well, it's not prejudice, close to it. So I think a lot of people had their own journey on it. Anthony Kennedy did not. He came to the Supreme Court open. Perhaps it was the Californian in him. Joan Didion wrote that you know, she was a friend of, of the Kennedy family, and she said that she remembers going to dinner very frequently at uh, Anthony Kennedy's home in, in Sacramento. His dad was a lobbyist there. And uh, that his father, one of his father's friends in the, in the capital community, was, was to her uh, sense, clearly a gay man. And she wondered if that was part of the makeup of Anthony Kennedy, whatever it was, from the from the day he came on the court, uh, a court that had really not just continued a, a practice of of disadvantaging under law uh, the LGBT, what we call now LGBTQ people, uh, but beyond that, kind of raising the wall. You know, the, one of the worst Supreme Court decisions of my lifetime, not the worst or last, but one of them was Bowers versus Hardwick, which. Uh, criminalized intimate relations only as to gay people in, in Texas. Tony uh, Anthony Kennedy struck down that uh, in Lawrence versus Texas, wrote the opinion for that. So he, is, he had come along, he didn't really need a lot of growth as, as I did. And I remember, you know the story, and that day is what I want to tell you about. So I'm out in the plaza of the Supreme Court, as I am for a lot of those big cases. The uh, there's what they call the running of the interns. Uh, every news organization that's out there has somebody who's going to grab grab the opinion. This is before the electronic. Even today, though, the bright sunlight, you want the hard copy. And also, you can. I find I can work my way through hard copy better than something on the phone. Anyway, they run across the plaza. They all wear tennis shoes and they shove the, the 75, 120-page opinion in your hands. And the music goes on in your ear. And George Stephanopoulos says, what happened? <laughs> I hate those days, I really do. But that day was pretty clear, and, I, and it was pretty clear because of what Justice Kennedy and, and the majority of that court did that day. And I just wanted to, to read a little bit from that opinion and then tell you what happened out there in the plaza. It, th that opinion is full of the kind of ringing phrases that the conservatives mock Anthony Kennedy for. Uh, I always kind of I'm not, I'm a non-lawyer, so I, I always felt that he, I covered his, his Supreme Court nomination hearings, and uh, his, his children were with him, they were high school, college age, 
But I always kind of, as I listen to him, I thought he, he explains things in his cases as, as he might around a family dinner table. That was, that's always been my impression. So that, and he said he wants ordinary citizens to be able to understand what the law is. And so in, in that opinion, he said, among many other things, he said, the identification and protection of fundamental rights is an enduring part of the judicial duty to interpret the Constitution. It requires courts to exercise reasoned just judgment in identifying interests of the person so fundamental, the state must accord them respect. It goes on to say, the nature of injustice is that we may not always see it in our own times. The generations that wrote and ratified the Bill of Rights in the 14th Amendment did not presume to know the extent of freedom in all of its dimensions, and so they entrusted to future generations a charter protecting the right of all persons to enjoy liberty as, as we learn its meaning. When new insights reveal discord between the Constitution's central protections and a received legal stricture, the claim to liberty must be addressed. And, and that is social justice. Now, what happened on the plaza? It was an amazing day. Lots of people out there. Sometimes lots of people are out there angry. Some people, sometimes a lot of people are out there happy. And I'll tell you this, there weren't many people out there who came to be angry about, about this event. People came out to celebrate it. And among them was the, the, the Gay Men's Choir of Washington. This is an old institution probably founded in the late 70s or early 80s. And they were out there as the, as the packet came to me and kind of, and I find some of this language, the, the opinion goes on to remember to talk about marriage in such a beautiful way and the humanity of it and saying that these people ask not for anything, so they ask to be recognized under this law. And as I was reporting on it, the Gay Men's Choir was right across from me, 20 feet, it, you know, they were all lined up against the, steps of the club and they're just right out there and they they break into the national anthem and uh, I look over there and they're singing it for all it's worth and uh, and they're crying and my producer that day was a gay man and he was crying and we had a guest commentator on standby she's a lesbian woman and she was crying and I remember hearing and I it was all I could do is all I can do now not to cry. And I remember thinking they were singing it like for the first time it was theirs. And I thought about that. I thought about that ever since, as you can tell, it stayed with me. It was theirs because in that opinion, in that judicial opinion, they were seen under the Constitution. And that is kind of what I'm hearing in the work of this foundation it's all about, right? The people who you are serving are invisible too often, not just to reporters, but to the law, to the, to the justice under which we want to live, which the preamble of the Constitution charges us to pursue. And it's that, it's that act of seeing that I think is an act of love in its truest sense. That's what I heard out there on the plaza that day. That's what I hear tonight. And I'm very, very grateful to be here as you, as you honor this work.